Hey, what's up? My name is Jennifer Verapen, and this past Friday, I visited Railroad Square Art Park for their first Friday event. This is my review. I went with my best friend, Jesse No, and yeah, that would be me. We visited a lot of places that day. It was hard to keep track. There was so much going on. I definitely did manage to visit at least three galleries. The first gallery was Renditions in Art Space, located right by Cosmic Cat Comics on Industrial Drive, featuring work by Ned M. Stacy. I had a lot of work for sale by many other artists, along with his own gorgeous portrait paintings. The second gallery was the FSU BFA Warehouse, located on McDonald Drive in a building all by itself. It's filled with studio spaces for all of our amazing BFA students, and I was just absolutely blown away by a lot of pieces. There really was no way to describe it. There was a labyrinth of art in all different forms and different perspectives that it almost became too mentally chaotic to handle. I know Jessie found herself a little disturbed by all the twists and turns, the unfinished pieces, the constant barrage of different ideas. It was definitely a mind-blowing experience. One of my favorite pieces from there was an unentitled mixed-media piece by Ray Siciliano. Upon further research at FSU's art review system, it is part of a series that represents her notion of home. The monotone coloring of the houses and the horizontal reflection of the houses combined with the running ink creates a dark, heavy, cloud-like effect that's very visually compelling. After that we wandered for a little. I'll be the first to admit that I was completely turned around and totally lost, even though the layout of the park is a small circle. We got distracted, after all that, by a guy with amazing ball juggling skills for a good ten minutes. But uh, after that, we consulted a map to find our last significant destination. I need another map. <laughs> The third and final gallery we visited was 621 Gallery's artist-in-residence, Kelly Bomer. I believe her works affected me most deeply out of all the other works at Railroad Square. And even though I already talked about my favorite artwork, I am thoroughly compelled to speak about this entire room of artwork because of its undeniable air of controversy. Upon walking into her gallery, we were quickly lulled into a safe mindset by the bright, childish colors and materials. But as you look around, as you take in exactly what is used and what is portrayed in every piece, you sink slowly into a darker place, and in some people's case, an honestly unsettled feeling. Kelly Bomer's artist statement, if I recall correctly, states that she wants viewers to feel both attraction and repulsion. This was done quite expertly. While I definitely felt attraction and maybe a slight discomfort to the more macabre aspects of her work, especially the one with the fox pelts and the one with the taxidermy eagle, I believe, with the bloody colored yarn pulling down to the floor, Jess and other viewers I saw come in were there, were absolutely beyond disturbed and measurably repulsed. Jessie told me herself that she was definitely attracted definitely saw the beauty in all the work, but that she couldn't stop that disturbed feeling. To quote her directly, her animal in instincts kicked in, and she suddenly felt like she had to leave. Like when a cat knows something's wrong and just books it out of there. 
O N. By the way, Kelly, if you're watching, she'd like to know if the partially decomposed cat was real and if you used to know it. Anyway, overall, my experience at Railroad Square was fantastic. I'm glad I had to go because if I wasn't assigned, I probably would never have even known about it. As it stands, I would go back again, and I probably will. There's so many varieties of people, artwork, and cultures, like a quirky creative melting pot. There's a perfect mix so that it's fun for everyone, and there's always at least one exhibit that appeals to someone's taste.